Hi, I'm Michael Thompson, and I am here for Exotic Effects. Uh, today I'd like to talk about a pedal that I've been using for the last month or so, and I'm really excited about it. It's the new SP compressor by Exotic. And um, I'm excited about it because it sort of has... It's been a quest for me finding the right compressor. Of course, I've tried every compressor that comes along, and they all have their own voice. They all have their own thing that they do. Uh, the SP is the first one that's come along that is one of those pedals you can kind of leave on all the time. Clean, distortion. Uh, it's just, it's fantastic. It has a full-bodied sound. Um, the night I got it, uh, my friends from Exotic brought me one at a gig and I put it right on the pedal board and the settings it was on just straight up the same ones it's on right now I've left them there because uh, and I left it on all night solos clean everything I just left it on I went wow this is a really great pedal but I wasn't sure until I got home started testing it against my other pedals and um, it has won the battle of the pedals, uh, the compressor pedals, and um, I was going to demonstrate today a little shootout between some very popular pedals that have been my main pedals for the last years. Uh, all these pedals have spent time on my pedal board. I've, I've used them for live gigs, for my studio stuff, um, so I thought they would be good pedals to compare the SP to because I know I love this, I know I love that, I know I love that, um, but let's see how it does. Let me turn off some of this ambience here. Um, I have my trusty Strat here. Okay, so uh, the first pedal we'll listen to and we'll keep comparing it to is the SP. That's on right now. In my favorite setting, which is just volume straight up and blend straight up, uh, it has a really cool blend control, which is a great idea. A couple of other companies have tried it and it didn't work as successfully, I, I don't feel, as this one, uh, because this isn't like, this you're aware of the compression all the time, it's not like it totally goes away, but you can use it more for a boost pedal if you go. You turn the volume up, the blend down. It's, it's not compressing that much, but it's a real nice um, boost that keeps a lot of the highs. That's another thing I love about this pedal. Compressors, for some reason, a lot of them dull your sound. S uh, some of them don't. A couple of them don't. But then they tend to be problematic when you're using distortion because uh, then the highs they add can get very, very high and very noisy. This one's real quiet. So like I said, right now I'm using it more as a booster. But if you turn the blend up, and then maybe the volume down a little, because when you turn the blend up, the volume goes up. You can hear the squish. It rounds out your attack. Speaking of attack, there's a, a couple of dip switches inside that control the speed of the attack. I messed around with them yesterday. I gotta say, the way the pedal comes is just perfect. Uh, I'm a tinkerer, and I usually uh, mess around with all the variables with a pedal, but this one, it's almost like <laughs> I superstitiously haven't wanted to change it from the way it was when I first got it. So anyway, I, I put these straight up, and that's a good amount with it off. 
Everything sounds so much thinner. That's, that's, but this adds a fullness that I just love. It has a three position uh, threshold uh, s switch on the, on the top here that uh, takes it to a higher, higher compression, then lower the volume drop for more of a subtle thing. But again, I've just left it in the middle because it just has the perfect amount. So that is, I always, my bread and butter for my studio work, along with all the other kind of sounds and parts I, I do, is my clean sound. That on pop, in pop music is your number one most important sound. Uh, just because it goes with most of the parts you're going to be doing, of course, then you got to do power chords and solos and maybe some gritty parts. Some guys specialize more in rootsy stuff, but... When people hire me or when they want me to play on a track, they're going to be listening for that that sound because, uh, I mean, fortunately for me, they've heard it on so many hit records, it's like it reminds them of a hit, usually. Maybe sometimes a schlocky hit, but... So anyway, that's the SP. Uh, the next pedal is the good old Boss compressor, the CS3 which I, I gotta say, I haven't been a huge fan of. Some guys, just it's their main pedal and they leave it on all the time. Um, I've always had one around to uh, kind of compare other pedals to. I, I go in and out of using it. Um, here's the SP again. Here's the CS3. The SP, yeah, it's a little louder. It's, it's funny because the, the CS3, I've always used with, the, with all four knobs straight up. And I always thought that was giving me quite a boost. This is without it. This is with it, and it doesn't seem to be giving me that much. I'll turn the level up so it's playing fair with the other one. Thing I noticed right off the bat with, with the boss is that it's soft and it's like very compressed. Which for me just spells like it's it's good for chord, but um, I would never have it on with my with my distortion sound or with um, anything that I wanted edge to. Because as you see. I mean, that's just got, maybe it's because of the blend that I'm hearing a bunch of the dry sound in there too with the SP, which is what I love, but it's still compressing and it, it gives it that beautiful, that thing. And because a clean sound, like this clean Strat sound, you gotta have a compressor on it. That's just a law. I know some guys aren't into compressors, but this might be the, the compressor that people that don't usually use compressors start using because, because of the boost capabilities and because of the fact that it, it just sort of makes your guitar sound better. Okay, so we beat the boss, I feel. And now the next one, which has been a, a real favorite of mine, is the Analog Man Orange Squeezer. This is without it. This is with it. Right away, you hear it grab. It's a real squishy compressor. Give it more volume. The thing I like about this one, which I was talking about before, is that the highs almost are enhanced, which is good and bad. for that kind of thing. Um, again, I've had this on my live pedal board and it, it's been really hard to make work live because, because of that thing with the high transients where it, if it isn't just a skanky funk part, it can be 
too high and it doesn't play that well with other pedals. Um, but it's a great sound, the orange squeezer. But again, this is the orange squeezer. This is the SP. SP is just more, it's like a, more of a organic sound. Uh, you can get it to squish like I showed you before by putting, mix, turning the mix up, but uh, it just seems to be, that's more of a usable all around sound. The squeezer. It can get very thin and bright, but for funky, you know, skanky stuff, that's that's a good thing. So anyway, on the same pedal, because this is the bi comp that they make, here's the Ross, which I gotta say, I never really got on with that. It was mo it was more just the orange squeezer that that always got me on this one. Uh, funnily enough, the SP is based on the the classic Ross design, which I never had an actual Ross compressor. I mean, I've heard that the, you know, the lore about it is that it was like the, the great design. It's just a simple compressor design, but so Analog Man, it's good. Uh, like I said, I didn't tend to use this side. When I used this pedal, I, I used uh, the orange squeezer because it immediately has that high. The Ross. The SP. You can tell they're from the same family, this one and this one. But uh, again, comparing this, which is just a compressor without a blend, and the SP, I can hear what that blend, the dry, that's being added in. And I, I believe that's the factor about this pedal that really makes me like it over these other ones. So moving down here is the diamond compressor, which has spent a lot of time on my studio pedal board and my live one. And uh, I like it, but I always come away uh, wanting it to be something else. It's really well made and it's real quiet. A lot of this is splitting hairs. Obviously, I'm showing these compressors because they're my compressors. I've used them. They aren't like uh, just a random sampling. And I and I love them all for what they do. Uh, purpose of this demonstration is just really to show how much uh, this one kind of has over the other ones. So the diamond is good, and it's got an EQ which you can do it. It's a tilt which you can make it darker. which it actually tends to thin out the sound so I never really use that function that much but a great a great compressor again it's just maybe because it doesn't have the dry mixed in live I it never it never quite killed me that much and I would always end up taking it off my live pedal board but um, the thing is it's like when a pedal makes me smile and I want to keep coming back to it. I know it's a winner. And the SP, it's almost like the day I got it, I went, man, that sounded good last night. And then the next day I came in here and played it and went, wow, it really sounded as good as I thought it sounded. And that's what I love in a pedal. And those tend to stay with me for years. Um, anyway, I'm just, and this is, this is a month after I've been using it. I didn't get it yesterday, so. Uh, <laughs> Moving along here is the Maxon. Which to me was always a, a good subtle compressor. Uh, not one that you go, whoa, that has like a great squish to it. It's got like a DBX compressor in it. Which is good for subtle when you don't want it to sound like it has that much of a compressor effect. And it's very quiet, and it's Maxon, so it's good, you know. But it's almost like this one 
doesn't compress enough, even though I've got the threshold, so it's, so it's on. I mean, that should be, to me, that should be a little squishier sounding, but it isn't. It's almost like you don't have a compressor on, which is okay for certain, uh, actually that's been on my live pedal board, I mean my studio pedal board for years, kind of as my compressor that I use when I don't want it to sound like I have a compressor on it. But, but again, the SP is kind of filling that, that purpose uh, just real easily the way we did with the uh, turning the, the mix down. See, that, that does what this does, but you get more of a boost. Okay, last but not least is the good old MXR Dynacomp, which this is a reissue which came out a couple of years ago that doesn't have true bypass and doesn't have an LED and doesn't have a jack for the power, so I have one coming out of the thing. It's, it's goofy, actually. I would much rather it had all that stuff on it. But to make it fair, I have it on a little send return box here. Now this has the cosmic it colors the sound, kind of in a way that everyone's used to because the good old Dynacomp colored it. Which you can really smack it. Which is good. I find that when I use the Dynacomp, besides having to do a send return, which is a pain, uh, I have to put something after it, like some kind of EQ to jack the highs and the signal back up. But you can get a real good sound like that. But as you can hear, it's coloring the sound. It has this mid-rangey kind of thing that's nice. This is how bright it is without it. And then with it. But again, it's 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 sort of a specialty compressor, not one you put on all the time. And then again, back to this guy. So in my opinion, the exotic SP compressor. Uh, beats these other pedals that, like I said, are, have been favorites of mine, and they're all good for what they do. But for, and plus, it's a half space, which is just amazing because uh, both my live pedal board and, well, you see this pile of pedals here, mostly for my live pedal board, it's, it's perfect because I, I had just enough room to put it, like, first on my pedal board. And uh, so anyway, gets high marks from me.